there's some advantages to a mask design that I've come up with that I just want to share. We'll start out by talking about the two main kind of masks that you see out there. They're surgical masks. Kind of, it's, it's a rather rectangular looking, goes across the mouth and nose. And those masks are intended to catch droplets coming out of a person's mouth so they don't infect others which is definitely something we all want to accomplish these days. There's another thing we hope to accomplish too, though, which is to stop from getting the virus ourselves. Surgical masks are not great at doing that. First, surgical masks do not make a tight seal to the face, and that means that air carrying the virus can come around the mask and into our mouth and nose. Secondly, surgical masks and the masks that the CDC and others are having us make that are like surgical masks are not necessarily made of material that's going to filter out viruses anyways. What we would prefer is something that's more like what they call the N95 masks. These masks not only accomplish keeping our own droplets from infecting others, but also help to protect us from the virus. But there's a shortage of these. Our healthcare workers absolutely deserve these before we do. So we should not be taking actual N95 masks and using them. What we can do is to try to take a step up past just a surgical mask and try to add some protection for our cells at the same time. So we're gonna show here a homemade mask that attempts to do a, a couple of things a surgical mask does not do. First, it's also going to seal around our face. That seal is going to be testable so that you'll know that it works. We want to use as our filter material something that has a chance of filtering out the virus. There's a lot of different things out there. There's a lot of ideas for what to use out there. Um, there's some good things. There's some warnings about a few materials. We're going to talk about a couple of those. And, but we do want to use some material that, that actually may have a chance of protecting us from the virus getting to our mouth. We want to make this so that it's very easy to construct. You don't need sewing skills for what I'm about to show you. You just need to be able to use a hot glue gun and some scissors. And then we want it to be made of common household materials. I don't want you having to run to the store to get what you need in order to construct a mask to protect you from people, you know, at the store. There's a problem in that logic. We were gonna make it out of things that we have around the house, and we want this mask to be comfortable to wear, easy to breathe in, and the ability to be so cheap and easy that you may want to make it disposable. But before we get started, of course, I have to have the disclaimer, there's no guarantees with this. Don't hold me liable for how it works. It's up to you to come up with a safe mask and one that you feel is comfortable. I just wanna offer up a few ideas that may help you along that path. So in order to do what we wanna do right now, here are the materials you'll need. First, you will need a paper plate and preferably a nine inch plate. And this plate should not be permeable to air some tin foil, a hot glue gun, scissors, and then some kind of material for the straps of the mask. Rubber bands are perfectly acceptable. What we're going to use is a Filtreat air filter. There's several different ones by Filtreat. This is not their top of the line one, and it definitely should say on the front that it filters out viruses. So what we want to do is take the filter media from a Filtreat filter and make a face mask out of this. Now this is 20 by 25 by one inch. Once you free it from its little cage here and take the actual filter media out, what you end up with is, I'm gonna say roughly seven to seven and a half feet of this. This material breathes quite easy. It's made to be used in your home air conditioners. And in that capacity, it claims to be able to, to filter out viruses. When you take a piece of this material, and I'm gonna hold this close to the camera, hopefully you can see. If I pull on this, it does actually deform. And I really worry about that because once it's deformed, I'm pretty certain that we've significantly damaged the ability of the material itself to catch a virus if it gets overstretched. We're gonna start by taking our plate and I've gone ahead and marked one off here. You'll see I have the top part here labeled nose and the bottom part here labeled chin. And what we're going to do is just cut out those two pieces and the right size might be different for your face compared to my face. All you need from the plate are these two things. And what these are going to do is get attached together and form this seal against our face. You'll see how this top part here, this, is, this will be the part that touches our face. Then it'll come out. And then you'll see it, it makes an angle down and then starts to make an angle across where the bottom of the plate would be. You do want that angle across that way it's not gonna be poking at our filter material and perhaps damaging it like we talked about a minute ago. This part 
it will eventually go around our nose like so. And then the bottom part is going to come up around our chin. We'll hold these two things together and get that fit along your own face. Once you have that size feeling about right, we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and hot glue it right into those positions. At this point, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. And now what we wanna do is take all these edges that are poking up and seal them down so that they're tight with each other. It should look a little bit like this. Go ahead and trim off some edges. Make it so that it's round where it should be round. It's a little bit flexible at this point. It'll actually stiff it up a little bit here in a couple of minutes. The seal itself should be testable. Like I just have a Ziploc bag here. Hold it over the front of this and ask myself, is air getting around this thing? Of course, you'll be able to suck some air around it. We don't have it completely conformed to our nose yet. We will get to that in a few minutes. But the, you'll find that, okay, yeah, this paper plate touching your face, that really does have the capacity to make a pretty darn good and wide seal against your face. And that's one of the key features of this is that strong, wide seal that the paper plate gives us. All right, so we're going to take our filter material, but I just want a piece. As long as your filter material is big enough to cover this, then you're pretty good, you're pretty well off. At this point, I like to go and just hot glue one, hot glue like right here on the side, and just put the filter material so it's hanging off of it, held on by that one spot. We can kind of lay it over the top, and then trim that so that it's gonna fit in roughly the right shape. Don't cut it too close, because we're gonna make a double seal here in a minute. Trimmed up, mine now looks like so. And now, starting with that spot where we began to glue it down already, we want to form a ring of glue all the way around and hold and push this material down onto that. This seal that we're making with the hot glue right now should not have gaps in it where air can get by. Once you're done with this, you actually get a little bit of structural stability in the whole mask from the ring of glue that you're making. And again, one of the things we're trying to avoid is any air getting to your mouth that doesn't go through the media. And one way we try to accomplish this is through the seal. So now I want you to go and run hot glue along the whole outer edge of it. I'll hold this up to the camera. So see how the glue is just right here along the edge? You know, if you don't mind burning your finger a little on hot glue, it's nice just to spread that around. So you have one seal on the underneath side of the filter media and another one that's actually doing the visible edge of the media so that you can see that there's no gaps all the way around. So now even if that inner seal has some gap that we missed as we glued it down, this outer seal should not. This right here is largely the mask that we want to make. The one other important thing we need is to make it conform correctly to our nose. On an N95 mask and, you, and on a surgical mask, you'll find there's a piece of metal that goes along the top here that you get to pinch down to make it shape to your nose. Well, there's a lot of ideas online for how to get that metal piece. I've seen people using wire and all kinds of other things. Here's what you really need about a 12 by 12 square of tin foil. So you take this and what you're gonna do is fold it in thirds. And now what I'm going to do is just fold it in half over and over until I have a thin metal strip. Until I have a piece of tin foil like that, you'll feel it's got some good stiffness to it at that size. And yet it can also be bent and flexed to fit around your nose. Go ahead and glue the center of that especially, and then just glue down each side of that. So now you have a mask with the metal strip at the top that can be used to conform right to your particular nose. Then pushing down, you're gonna feel a nice, good, tight fit all the way from your nose down to your whole cheekbone area here. It may feel a little loose underneath. That's gonna go away once we put the straps on here. And at this point, you can pull out your handy Ziploc bag and test again. Really, I find the straps to be super easy to make, but I do want to say one thing about them. An N95 mask has two straps. They do not go around your ears like a surgical mask. They go around your head and they hold tighter. When I was involved in Hurricane Harvey cleanup, we used N95 masks, and I specifically remember that, that was, it was a nice snug fit, and it went all the way around the back of your head with more pressure than your ears are generally going to, to hold for that. So you do want to make straps that go all the way around the back. What I'm gonna do is use this ribbon. This ribbon should be coming to about where the mask would be. Cut this ribbon in half 
and add a flexible hair tie to the middle of it. You'll see there's a lot of flexibility in this and plenty of space for it to come around and hold that thing tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this and hot glue this on as the upper strap, attaching it just below where I have the nose piece, making sure that the ribbon is flat coming around to the other side. And that gives me my upper strap. The lower strap is gonna go around the back of your neck and up a little bit to your chin. But you gotta remember, it's gotta be a little longer than that to fit over your head in order to get to that position. Because of that, I'm gonna use two stretchy bands. It needs to stretch wide enough to get over my head and then can come back small enough to be snug around the neck. So now I have this that can fit up over my head as I'm putting it on and still fit snugly around the neck at the bottom portion here. So now I'm gonna take this and the first one we're up here by the nose piece, this one I'm gonna do down here towards the bottom corners so that it fits around my neck area. All right, let's go ahead and try this on. I'm gonna remove my glasses. Put my chin right there while I pull the back part over and then pull the other part up over the top of my head, which I made a little bit too small, I think. Probably could have used more length of those straps, but I can get it on there. And voila, I'm wearing a mask that I made myself, fit that tightly around my nose. I'm breathing through a, a, a material it has the potential to figure to filter out viruses and I can even test that the seal is good by you can feel the, how tight the seal is or isn't against your face as you do that so there you go I would definitely recommend adding material to the inside and the outside to protect the filter material itself and other than that I'm sure other people can come up with some good improvements but that's what I have to add to the conversation